بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام الأتمان الأكملان على خير خلق الله أجمعين وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهديه واستنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We continue with the prophetic parables the parables that were given by our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and tonight we have uh, two parables uh, and both of these are muttafaqun alayh both of these are agreed upon found in Bukhari and Muslim the first of these parables, the Prophet ﷺ compares the righteous good friend to the evil and wicked friend. And so on the authority of Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu an, عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال مثل الجليس الصالح والسوء كحامل المسك ونافخ الكير فحامل المسك إما أن يحذيك وإما أن تبتاع منه وإما أن تجد منه ريحا طيبة ونافخ الكير إما أن يحرق ثيابك وإما أن تجد ريحا خبيثة The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says the example of a good righteous companion and an evil companion is that of one who is carrying musk and another who blows a pair of bellows the iron smith and then he said the one who is carrying musk will either gift you some of it or you will buy some of it from him or you will smell some nice fragrance from him. But the one who blows a pair of bellows, the ironsmith, he will either burn your clothes or you will smell a very bad smell from him. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us human beings to be social. We don't like to live on our own but rather we like to have friends and companions. But the thing about friendship is that it plays a huge role and leaves a big impact on you as an individual and on your future. And so as the famous saying goes, الصاحبو ساحب The friend, the companion, he pulls he pulls you meaning either he will pull you in his direction and make you to become like him or you will do that with him either this or that and so the companion the friend he leaves an imprint on you he leaves an impact and an effect on you and so this is why the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave us this parable of both the good and the evil friend and how each of them affects us and so the prophet ﷺ compared the good righteous pious friend he compared him to someone who he is always carrying musk or perfume and he mentioned three things three things about such a person the first, the two of you, the two of you will cooperate and exchange with one another what returns in benefit for both of you in this life and the next. You have a good righteous friend and so you both help one another in righteousness and exchange with one another what brings you both a benefit in this life and the next. 
and that he compared to the one who carries musk you will buy some from him he sallallahu alaihi wasallam said either you will buy some from him the second the second is that the benefit would only be from one side the benefit would only be from your friend he is benefiting you he is advising you he is guiding you to do good he is preventing you from doing evil so this he sallallahu alaihi wasallam compared him to the one who carries musk that he will gift some of it to you he will gift some of it to you the third if neither of these two situations happen if neither of these two situations happens then at least you would benefit from his good state where all you see and hear from him is good you don't hear you don't see any evil from him so that would now develop a love for good that will make you to at least recognize and uh, appreciate the good that is in your friend even if even if you don't benefit from him in terms of his advice in terms of his guidance and so on and so forth at least at least at least it will leave a good effect on you and this the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said you will smell some nice fragrance from him you will you will smell some nice fragrance from him and so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he compared the good righteous friend to one who he always carries some nice fragrance some nice perfume and then he said sallallahu alaihi wasallam either you will buy some from him and benefit or he will gift it to you or if none of these happens then at least you will be smelling something nice from him moving on to the evil friend the evil friend the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam compared him to someone who uses a pair of bellows to smelt iron uh, for those of you who do not know what bellows are basically it's a tool that was used in the past uh, to blow with to blow into fire so it's like a tool that you know has two handles and you and you uh, basically compress you compress it like this and there's a bag inside and as you compress it you keep on compressing it like this you're blowing air into into the fire and this was used in the past to uh, smelt the iron to 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 basically melt the iron and to give it shape and so on and so forth so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam compared the evil friend to such a person and so one of two things would happen either this friend his evil his evil would affect you and you would become harmed by it directly in this life and in the next and so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that he will burn your clothes the iron smith who who blows uh, who uses a pair of bellows what happens is when he blows into the into the fire into the iron sparks come out so if you're standing next to this person you're going to you know uh, your 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 clothes are going to get burnt the second possibility is that this friend you will not be free from his evil yes okay you don't get burned you don't get burned you don't get harmed directly but you will not be free from his evil he is always bothering you with evil either mentally or spiritually or you being associated with him would leave a bad impression on others about you people would lose their confidence in you they'll say you know these are the kind of people you hang around and so if you are not directly affected by his evil the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said 
he will either burn your clothes or, the other possibility, you will smell a bad smell from him. You will smell a bad smell from such a person. And so, these are the two examples that the Prophet ﷺ gives. And this is why, this is why concerning the bad friend, we will regret our evil friends who led us to evil and to the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions this in the Quran. And he mentions how a person will come on the day of judgment. وَيَوْمَ يَعَضُّ الظَّالِمُ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي اتَّخَذْتُ مَعَ الرَّسُولِ سَبِيلًا And the day when the wrongdoer, he will bite his nails out of regret. And he will say, oh, I wish that I had followed the path of the messenger. يَا وَيْلَتَى لَيْتَنِي لَمْ أَتَّخِذْ فُلَانًا خَلِيلًا he will say, I wish that I had never taken so-and-so as my close friend. لَقَدْ أَضَلَّنِي عَنِ الذِّكْرِ بَعْدَ إِذْ جَاءَنِي وَكَانَ الشَّيْطَانُ لِلْإِنسَانِ خَذُولًا It was he, it was this close friend who made me go astray after the reminder had come. Or it was he who truly made me go astray from the reminder. And the reminder here is the Qur'an. After it had reached me. And shaitan has always betrayed man. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that in the akhirah, on the day of judgment, all close friends will become enemies. And the only exception are the righteous. al akhillau yawma idhin ba'duhum li ba'dun adu illa al muttaqin close friends will become enemies to one another on the day of judgment except the people of taqwa and the people of righteousness and so this is because their friendship the friendship of most people the friendship the friendship of most people in this dunya was for the sake of the dunya the majority of people today even if they are Muslims, their friendship is for the sake of the dunya. So what will happen is when they depart from the dunya, that friendship will remain in the dunya. And in the akhirah, that friendship will turn into enmity. On the other hand, the righteous, their friendship in the dunya was not for the sake of the dunya, but rather solely and purely for the sake of Allah. And so their friendship will continue with them into the Akhirah since it was for Allah and not for the temporary life of this dunya. And the Prophet ﷺ tells us of a man who visited uh, a friend of his, a, a, a brother in Islam of his, in another village. So he undertook this journey to visit his friend. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made an angel to go after him and watch him along his way. And the angel came to him and he said, where are you planning on going? So the man said, I'm, I'm traveling to visit a brother of mine. Uh, and so the angel asked him, do you have a favor that he did for you that you are undertaking this journey as a result you know basically you're you're, you're trying to uh, compensate him for the favor that he did to you this is why you're you know making this long journey and so the man he said no rather i am undertaking this journey to visit my brother only because I love him for the sake of Allah. And so on that, the messenger, uh, the angel, he says, I am a messenger of Allah to you, that indeed Allah has loved you just as you have loved your brother for his sake. And so what does this show us? It shows us 
the difference between the friendships of the people of the dunya and the friendships of the people of the akhirah whose friendship is based upon you know iman and the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Ibn Qayyim he mentions that uh, friends are three friends are three the first like nutrition like food that you always need the second like medicine that you sometimes need and the third like a disease that you never need and so the first is the example of the righteous friend food you need it all the time in order to live and a righteous friend is just like that the second or the third we'll skip and go to the third the third he's uh, Ibn Qayyim said like a disease that you never need this is the evil friend the bad friend who you know he's only gonna lead you to uh, you know to to your ruin and so he is like a disease that you never need as for the second then it is the example of a friend that has some evil qualities but in general he has good qualities that you can benefit from and so he said it is like medicine that you need sometimes not all the time and so among the lessons that we learn from this hadith is firstly the importance of befriending only good and righteous people and the danger of befriending evil and wicked people and the a, a very common example that we have concerning uh, having evil and wicked friends and companions close to us is what happened to Abu Talib the uncle of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who supported the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam but he failed to accept Islam and so when he was on his deathbed the Prophet ﷺ came to him and said, My uncle, say la ilaha illallah. Just say it and I will be with you on the day of judgment. I will intercede on behalf of you. All you have to do is say la ilaha illallah. So Abu Jahl and Abdullah ibn Umayyah ibn al mughira two of the leaders of Quraysh, who were staunch enemies of Islam, they came and sat next to Abu Talib and said, Oh Abu Talib, how dare you, how dare you abandon the religion of your father, Abdul Muttalib? And so the Prophet ﷺ repeated, and they repeated, and they just kept on going back and forth. Abu Talib, he was confused, he didn't know what he should do. In the end, he died having not said the shahada instead instead being influenced by his evil companions and so this shows us the danger of befriending evil and wicked companions look at what it led Abu Talib to the second lesson that we learn from this hadith is that you are who your friends are you are defined by your companions and so if your friends are good and righteous then that means you are one of them you are one of the good and righteous people in society but if your friends are evil and wicked then you are one of them you are a wicked person and the evidence for this the Prophet ﷺ said الرجل عَلَى دِينِ خَلِيلِهِ فَلْيَنْظُرْ أَحَدُكُمْ مَنْ يُخَالِلْ Every man is upon the deen of his close friend. So let each and every single one of you to observe and to look at who he takes as his close friends. And so a Muslim must choose his friends wisely. This is why we are not allowed to befriend the kuffar the disbelievers because their kufr and their ways which contradict islam 
they're going to have an influence on you they're going to they're going to affect you whether you whether you notice it or not also we're not allowed to befriend evil people even if they happen to be muslims rather we have to choose the righteous to be our friends we move on after that to the next parable and this parable is concerning those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so عن أبي موسى الأشعري رضي الله عنه this hadith is also narrated by أبو موسى الأشعري رضي الله عنه قال قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم مثل الذي يذكر ربه والذي لا يذكر مثل الحي والميت the example of one who remembers his Lord and one who does not remember him is like that of the living and the dead. In the narration or in the wording of uh, Sahih Muslim, this was the wording uh, in Sahih al-Bukhari. In the wording of Sahih Muslim, the Prophet وسلم, said, مَثَلُ الْبَيْتِ الَّذِي يُذْكَرُ اللَّهُ فِيهِ وَالْبَيْتِ الَّذِي لَا يُذْكَرُ اللَّهُ فِيهِ مَثَلُ الْحَيِّ وَالْمَيِّتِ That the house in which Allah is remembered and the house in which Allah is not remembered is like the living and the dead. Is like the living and the dead. And so, in this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned the virtue and the importance of a dhikr which is to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with both your heart and your tongue and so he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam compared the one who is always remembering Allah to one who is alive who is full of energy full of movement benefiting himself through through this remembrance and through this dhikr on the other hand he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam compared the one who does not remember Allah to one who is dead who has no life and therefore he has no energy to move and therefore he's not gonna bring any good to himself he's not gonna benefit himself in any way and so this parable that the Prophet ﷺ gave is similar to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions comparing the believer to the disbeliever. Comparing the believer to the disbeliever. In Surah Al-An'am, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَوَمَنْ كَانَ مَيْتًا فَأَحْيَيْنَاهُ وَجَعَلْنَا لَهُ نُورًا يَمْشِي بِهِ فِي النَّاسِ كما مثله في الظلمات ليس بخارج منها كذلك زين للكافرين ما كانوا يحملون الله سبحانه وتعالى says and is one who was dead and then we gave him life and made for him light by which he could walk among the people is he like one who is in darknesses never to emerge from those darknesses and so in this parable in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala compares uh, the, the, the person who used to be a kafir, he compares him to one who was dead. He had no life. Then Allah guided him and he accepts Islam and Allah gave him life. So this shows us that the kafir is dead and the believer, he is full of life. And this parable that the Prophet ﷺ gave is similar in that regard. So the one who constantly remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is given life. That the one who does not remember Allah is not given. And this is because the remembrance of Allah with your heart and with your tongue is a sign of your recognition of Allah. It is a sign that you are fully conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is also a sign of your love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
what else would make you to want to always remember Allah except because of your love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so as a result as a result of uh, this remembrance Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remembers you in return and then he gifts you with life and this is the life of Iman this is the life of Iman and this is the life of the heart and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran concerning those who remember him uh, or he tells us he commands us to remember him and if we do remember him what we will get in return Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ so remember me and I will remember you remember me and I will remember you and this is further explained in a hadith uh, in a hadith Qudsi where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says يَقُولُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى أَنَا عِنْدَ ظَنِّ عَبْدِي بِي وَأَنَا مَعَهُ إِذَا ذَكَرَنِي فَإِنْ ذَكَرَنِي فِي نَفْسِهِ ذَكَرْتُهُ فِي نَفْسِي وَإِنْ ذَكَرَنِي فِي مَلَئٍ ذَكَرْتُهُ فِي مَلَئٍ خَيْرٍ مِّنْهُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this hadith Qudsi I am as my slave, my servant, expects me to be and I am with him when he remembers me if he remembers me inwardly then I will remember him inwardly and if he remembers me in an assembly among a group of people then I will remember him in a better assembly meaning in the assembly of the angels and so all of this shows us that the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remembering Allah both with your heart and your tongue it causes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be with you to be remembering you just as you remember Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remembers you and so this is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa compares the one who remembers Allah to one who is full of life as opposed to the one who does not remember Allah that he has no life he is like a dead person and so among the lessons that we learn from this hadith is first and foremost the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has many benefits for the servant and this hadith only highlighted one of those benefits that you know uh, a person he he has life in his heart he has life in his heart and Ibn Qayyim he lists over 70 different benefits of dhikr in his book which he compiled all the adhkar in this book Al-Wabil Al-Sayyib he lists over 70 different benefits and so among among these benefits that he mentioned is that the life of the Muslim is in him remembering his Lord your life as a Muslim is defined by how much you remember Allah also he mentioned that a person achieves the pleasure of Allah he also wards away shaitan from him uh, through a dhikr a person attains inner comfort inner peace serenity through a dhikr a person uh, he opens up the door to all good while a person who stays away from dhikr he is opening the door to all evil and so these are only a few of the many benefits that Ibn Qayyim mentioned the second lesson that we learned from this parable is that the best kind of dhikr and the most beneficial is when you combine when you combine the dhikr of the heart with the dhikr of the tongue this is the most rewarding 
you get the most benefit out of your remembrance of Allah when you combine the two. And that benefit that you get is both in this life and in the next. We mentioned some of the uh, benefits of dhikr. And as I said, Ibn al-Qayyim mentions over 70. All of those benefits are only truly and fully achieved by those who remember Allah with both their heart and their tongue combined. After that, after that, the next best thing is to remember Allah with your heart, but not with your tongue. So you are always mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with, with your heart and your soul. Even if you perhaps did not say the adhkar, you did not remember Allah with your tongue. And then the third, and the third uh, best is to remember Allah with your tongue, but not with your heart. To remember Allah with your tongue and not with your heart. This is the lowest level, and that is because you may remember Allah with your tongue, you may be saying the various adhkar, but your mind is somewhere else. So you do get the reward for what you said. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you, uh, meaning that we have many different verses and a hadith, especially a hadith where the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever says such and such, then he will get the reward, uh, such and such reward. These are the various adhkar that the Prophet ﷺ taught us. So if you said those various adhkar, as long as you said it with your tongue, then you will get the reward, insha'Allah. But you may not get the full benefit of uh, that dhikr if your heart was heedless you were not paying attention to what you were saying and this we see with regards to what we say in our salah the various adhkar the various duas uh, the quran that we recite in our in our salah uh, the entire salah contains dhikr and most of us unfortunately we lack al khushu'a we lack uh, that state of paying attention in our salah we are saying the words but our mind is somewhere else and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us that uh, not everyone will get the, the the same reward out of their salah some will only get a tenth some will only get a ninth uh, an eighth a seventh a sixth a fifth, a fourth, a third, or half reward for their salah. Uh, this is what the Prophet ﷺ mentioned. And so the most beneficial is when you combine the dhikr of the tongue with the dhikr of the heart. Uh, also among the lessons that we learn from this, from this hadith is that the virtue of a dhikr is for all places. Meaning that we should be saying a dhikr with our tongues and you know also with our hearts uh, everywhere, wherever we may be. Except, obviously, there are certain places when we should not be uh, mentioning the name of Allah, such as in the bathroom. Uh, but that is with the tongue. As for the heart, then even if you are in the bathroom, you should not lose sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning, you should not lose your mindfulness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, so, the virtue of dhikr is for all places. But as we mentioned in the narration of Sahih Muslim, uh, there is a specific virtue for dhikr at home and so in the in the narration of sahih muslim the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the house in which remembrance of allah is made and the house in which uh remember remembrance of allah is not made is like the living and the dead so this shows us that we should uh we should 
uh, revive our homes with the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our homes should not be free from the dhikr of Allah. And so uh, we have to teach our children the various adhkar. And there are so many different adhkar. And that brings us to the last lesson uh, from uh, this hadith. And that is that the adhkar that we have been taught by the Prophet wasallam are of two kinds. One, uh, those that are said uh, at any time or uh, in general. Uh, such as saying uh, Astaghfirullah La ilaha illallah Subhanallah wa bihamdih Subhanallah al-azim and so on and so forth Hasbi Allah wa ni'ma al-wakeel All of these various adhkar La hawla wa la quwata illa billah and so on and so forth These are general adhkar that we can say at any time you know especially when we're not doing anything keep your tongue moist with the remembrance of Allah, as the Prophet وسلم, advised uh, one of the companions. He said, keep your tongue moist with the remembrance of Allah. So this is at all times, in general. And the second kind of adhkar are those that are said at specific times, uh, for specific circumstances, for specific situations. And so, for example, we have the adhkar that we... Uh, recite in our salah and then we have the adhkar that we recite after our salah and then we have the the uh, the dhikr of uh, uh, throughout the day there are different kinds of adhkar such as when we wake up from bed before eating after eating uh, when we leave home when we enter home when we enter the masjid when we leave the masjid uh, the adhkar of the morning and the adhkar of the evening and then the adhkar before going to sleep all of these are different kinds of adhkar that we should teach our children we should teach our children these various adhkar and we should teach ourselves also uh, in order to keep our homes filled with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that so that we uh, attain what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned in this hadith and with that we come to the end of uh, tonight's session we ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to make us from among his righteous slaves who are always remembering him Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala inwardly and outwardly both in our hearts and upon our tongues سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته